Hi, I'm Dr. J, and this is a video about statistical modeling. This video is the first in a three-part series talking about likelihoods and eventually getting to maximum likelihood estimators. This three-part video series and these slides are part of a larger playlist all about statistical inference. All right, so let's talk about statistical modeling. So what I mean formally by statistical modeling is that you have a pair, call it script P and script S, for a set of possible observations. That script S is going to determine the sample space of the experiment. That is, what are all of the possible results that could have been observed in that experiment. And script P is going to be a collection of probability distributions that describe the probability of those outcomes in the sample space. Now this is a little bit overly formal for what we need. And what we typically do uh, as statisticians is that we provide a parametric model. And so this parametric model is going to have a parameter, call it theta. So this is just now very generic, but you've seen parameters before in other distributions, at least if you watched my other videos, where we talked about the binomial and having the parameter probability of success, or the normal distribution and having two parameters, the mean and a variance. So that's the same idea. This notation right here is just going to be used very generically to refer to any possible distribution for our data, y, given a parameter, theta, where that parameter could be a vector, that is, there could be multiple components, like with the normal distribution, where it has a mean and a variance. All right, this is a now a probability model for our observed data, y, given a value for a parameter, theta, typically theta, and going forward, the whole purpose of what we're gonna be doing in statistical inference is to make statements about these unknown parameters, theta. So to bring it back to the formal definition, what we're really saying is that the script P determines the possible values for our parameter vector theta. And the script S is the support for this particular parametric model. So for instance, if we had chosen a binomial distribution, we would have had integers up to some uh, maximum of n. If we had a normal distribution, we would have the whole real line. That's the idea of that script S, just defines the sample space according to the parametric distribution that we are assuming. So let's get into those two specific examples, binomial and normal. In the binomial example, just as a reminder, you can go and check out the video here first off if you want more information about that binomial distribution. But as a reminder, we're going to be thinking about performing some experiment n times. Out of those n times, we're going to record the number of successes, however we're defining successes. So that number of successes is going to be y, and n is going to be the number of attempts or trials for that experiment. The experiment is set up such that each attempt is independent, so that is, knowing the result of any number of the other attempts doesn't tell you anything about the remaining attempts. And finally, that each attempt has the same probability of success that I'm here going to call theta. And typically in a binomial experiment, it's that theta, that probability of success, that you don't actually know. All right, so we might write this. We might write that our random variable y has a binomial distribution with n attempts and probability of success theta. So if we bring this back to that notation of script P and script S, what we're trying to say is that we have a script S here that is the support for this experiment, that is the integers 0 up to n, where n is again the number of times that we're attempting the trial. And we have a script P that says, all right, we have a collection of binomial distributions that collection is determined, or the, that particular binomial distribution will be determined by a particular value for theta. But we don't know what theta is, and so theta could be anywhere between 0 and 1. And that defines our collection, or set, script P. All right, let's take a look at the uh, second example, our normal model. In a normal model, we're going to have a real number. And that real number is going to have a mean mu and a variance sigma squared. The uncertainty about what that value is going to be can be represented by a bell-shaped curve. And if we have those assumptions, then it's reasonable to assume that our unknown data point that we're going to get eventually, y, is a random variable. It has a normal distribution with a mean mu and a variance sigma squared. And so if we bring this back to that formal definition, we have s. As it's just saying, we have this collection of numbers y that are in the real line, so any real number. 
Our collection P, the set of probability distributions, is just a set of normal distributions with an unknown mean mu and an unknown variance sigma squared. The mu can be any real number, but the variance must be positive. And now here we see an example where we have two parameters. So if we want a single vector theta, we're just going to combine mu and sigma squared into that vector theta. Now we can go one step further with this normal distribution, and we can say that our normal model has n real numbers. Okay? And we have each of them has the same mean mu and variance sigma squared. And a histogram, now that we have a collection, we could plot a histogram, is, a reasonable represent, is reasonably represented by a bell-shaped curve. And finally, that each of our observations is independent of the others. And if we're in this scenario, now we can say that we have observations y sub i that are independent, normally distributed, with a common mean mu and a common variance sigma squared. And now we can go back to our formal definition for the script s and p. s is the support, that's just the numbers uh, the vectors y1 up to yn, where each of the elements of that vector are a real number. And then we have our collection of probability distributions that uh, really are the set of multivariate normal distributions, which we have not talked about yet, and you should not worry about it very much. Uh, this is the notation for multivariate normal. The key here is that there's still a single mean mu and a single variance parameter sigma squared. And so those data could inform us about these two variables. The next video is going to talk about the likelihood function. Hope to catch you there.